OK, let's look at some of the information. We don't have time to go through the whole book. Let's uh, focus on one critical aspect of your uh, thesis. In your book, you state many, many times that the planet has been cooling, not warming, in recent years, since 1998. I counted a dozen references in one chapter. There are arguably dozens uh, throughout the book. Uh, this is fundamental to your whole argument, isn't it? No, it isn't. What is fundamental to the argument is that if we just take the last 2,000 years, the planet was hot in Roman and Greek times. Then it cooled in the Dark Ages. Then it warmed in the medieval um, warmth. Then it cooled in the Little Ice Ages. And we are now, we've just come out of the Little Ice Age. Is it any wonder that the okay, planet but, but has warmed up? Why the up? dozens of references to what's happened since 1998? It's all about that wonderful four-letter word, time. And if you just look at the last couple of years you might have a different idea from when you look at the complete history of the planet. For example, we have had some fiercely cold weather in eastern Australia in the last couple of days. Now, some people might be tempted, oh, that's proof of climate change. It isn't. It is a normal variability. Whether you look at climate on a 10-year scale, a 1,000-year scale, a 100,000-year scale or a million-year scale, Climates always change. They always have since the planet formed on that Thursday 4,560 million okay. years ago. But here's, here's the main question you pose at the beginning of your final chapter called A moi, which I guess is your view. My views. OK, so uh, how many years must the planet cool before we acknowledge the planet is not warming? You're once again referring to this 19... What's happened since 1998? Also in that chapter, in the very last bit, I yes, asked... Why the, you don't, I, you don't I, want to talk about what's well, happened since um, 1998. Why is that? Um, when you're finished interrupting yourself, I'll right. go on to it. In I'm the actually end, interrupting you. At the Sorry. end of the chapter, that particular chapter, I ask a question which our global warmers never ask themselves. I ask the question, what happens if I'm wrong? Now, the evidence that I use to show that the planet has been cooling is the same body of evidence that they use. It comes out of the major meteorological centres in the world. We are currently in a cooling phase. Before that, we're in a warming phase. From 1940 to 1976, we were cooling. So we go through regular cycles of cooling and warming. The planet is dynamic. Just because we're alive today doesn't mean that we are influencing the planet. It okay, changes. Fair enough. Let's, let's look at some of these meteorological uh, stations that you're talking about. You say on page 381, for example, the Hadley Centre in the UK has shown that global warming stopped in 1998. You regard the Hadley data as reliable, I take it? Well, that's one of the four centres that put out climate data, and the Hadley Centre uses a slightly different database from some of the American centres. They use temperature uh, based on thermometer measurements. Some of the others use satellite and balloon measurements. And it's interesting that there is a rough correlation, but in detail there isn't a correlation. That is one of the four centres. OK, so you obviously regard it as reliable or you wouldn't have cited it. Uh, no, it's one matter. of the four centres, and okay. the four centres differ. So for the record, do you accept the Hadley figures that the years 1998 to, 2000 and, to 2006 include the hottest, the second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth hottest years in recorded history? That has been widely criticised across the world. Um, those figures are not in accord with what we get from the other climate centres. And the second thing is that the Bureau of the, the British Meteorological Society has actually withdrawn those comments. Now, we know from 1959, the Royal Society of Meteorologists um, in the UK argued that the variable climate was due to the atom bomb. In the 1970s, they argued that it was due to global cooling. Now they're arguing that we're all going to fry. So science is married to evidence. That evidence okay. constantly accumulates well, let's and Let's look changes. at the evidence from this uh, Hadley Centre. Their data for global mean temperatures, you've acknowledged they're reliable. They say 1998 is the hottest year on record. 2005, the second hottest year on record. The third hottest is 2003. The fourth, 2002. The fifth hottest, 2004. The sixth, 2006. Now, if these figures are right, isn't it reasonable to state that, that global temperatures have remained on a remarkably high plateau rather than cooling, as you're suggesting? No. In the 1930s, it was much hotter. We had, from 1920 to 1940, 
far less Arctic sea ice than now, much, much warmer temperatures. But one not, not according to the Hadley Centre. One swallow doesn't make a summer, and I come back to that wonderful four-letter word. If you look at a bracket of 10 years of time, that doesn't tell us what's happened to climate. That's telling us what's happened to the weather. And the second thing is that the Hadley Centre has been widely criticised, especially in the US, for those figures. NASA also gave similar figures, which they withdrew. Uh, I'll, I'll go through that in a moment. I will come to that, I promise you. Let's look at 2008, when the La Nina event impacted on temperatures. As you've written, it led to blizzards in China. 40% uh, of the rice crop killed by the cold in Vietnam, record low temperatures in Mumbai and Minnesota. So you actually single out one year uh, to make a demonstration yourself. Yet the Hadley data shows that 2008 was still warmer than any year prior to 1995, than any year back to 1880. A number of things. That's been widely criticised, as I'll now mention three times. NASA tried to do the same, and that was withdrawn by NASA. Well, it wasn't, and, but I'll come to that. And now. the last point is that if you look at climate over a very short period of time, in the period since 1850, since we've come out of the Little Ice Age, is it any wonder that after we come out of the Little Ice Age, temperature changes? And the only way to understand what climate is doing is to look at history. Now, the one point I make in this book is we are ignoring history at our peril. The Hadley Centre might be looking at 10, 20 or 50 years of information. That tells us nothing about the way the world is going. Except, so I, I understand your bigger point, except for the fact that you've spent <clears throat> so much of the book, you've quoted so many times, that from 1998 to now, that's a period of a little over 10 years, the climate has cooled, not warmed. I mean, you state that in order to, in order to make your argument mean something. No, presumably. in order to show that okay. the planet is variable. And planet Earth is dy no, dynamic. We live in Australia on the most variable habitated continent in terms of weather and climate okay. on the world. And the key point I'm making is the planet is variable. It always changes its dynamic. And to take a very small bracket of time is like looking at the love scene in Casablanca. Yes. That film is not about love. It's but, about a totally <laughs> different topic. And if you just take a couple of years, yeah. it's not telling you anything. Okay. So if, I mean, uh, I probably wouldn't cooling, be making so much of this if you hadn't made so much of that 10-year <laughs> period yourself. Well, now, listen, that, you're in, only in talking fact, about Chapter 7. Well, well, no, I'm talking, uh, about, quite a, I'm talking the about the introduction. I'm talking about the final chapter. I'm talking about the chapter on on air as well. Uh, the latest NASA analysis, that's April of 2009, from the Goddard Institute for Space Studies, states that 2008 was the ninth warmest year in recorded history. Now, does that figure make you think again about how much the Earth is cooling? It makes me think how warm it was in the Dust Bowl years of the US. It makes me think how that period from 1920 to 1940 uh, was a very, very warm period, and again, it shows me what we know when we look back in time, and that is that the planet is variable, we have cycles of climate, and these cycles of climate are huge, and for human arrogance to think that we can actually change the way the planet operates is really quite oh, laughable. Let's go back to your book.